Hello and welcome to another tutorial from Cami Page Boutique. I'm Brooke Tannehill and today I'm going to show you how I made this glitter hydro dip custom epoxy tumbler. As always, all the products I use will be listed in the description below and you may even find a coupon code or two that saves you some coin. Also, come join our exclusive Facebook group where you can take advantage of upcoming freebies and giveaways that you aren't going to want to miss. So without further hesitation, let's go ahead and get started. For this design, I am using a 20 ounce straight skinny and I did a swirl kind of ombre spray paint using four different Rust-Oleum 2X gloss spray paints. Um, I did a combination of modern mint, dreamy lavender, candy pink, and ocean mist. I'll list all the colors down below in the description. And then I had been epoxying some other cups and I had some left over. And so I am just doing a super ultra fine um, kind of layer over the entire surface of the cup. So you can see there, I'm just kind of scrape in the bottom, applying it over the entire surface. And then I forgot to record it. This is just a beautiful opal from Peachy Olive Glitters. This is silk. And I just kind of let her rip tater chip and covered the entire cup. Once that was done, I just rolled the cup onto the parchment paper just to make sure that there weren't any pokey bits. And then I let that dry for about 45 minutes to an hour. And then I spray sealed this twice with, with Rust-Oleum clear glass spray paint. Let that dry and then it was time to move into epoxy. For these coats of epoxy, I am using Artistry's one-to-one -one fast set just because it covers glitter so well because it's the thick viscosity. But I'm gonna come in with a coat of about 25 milliliters just to make sure that the glitter is nice and covered really making sure that I hit it with a torch so that we don't have any bubbles. And then I'm going to let that dry for about two hours and come in with another coat of about 25 milliliters um, just to make sure that I've got great coverage over the glitter and that it's a nice smooth surface so that when we go into the hydro dipping, we don't have any pokey bits or any unfortunate spots that are going to affect the paint coverage that we do. After the two coats, I do go in and I see in the top rim just to make sure that I'm exposing a little bit of that stainless steel and then it's time to move into the fun part which is the hydro dipping. For this step, I have a five gallon bucket with about, this is almost full with warm water. So you can see there that I'm using the same paint colors that I did to do the swirl. And again, it's the modern mint, the dreamy lavender, the candy pink and the ocean mist. And I am just taking my time, um, just spraying the different colors in every which way. There's no right or wrong, just kind of making different loops, different stripes, um, and just kind of getting a pretty awesome color scheme going Going with these same colors and the reason why I wanted to do the same colors is so there was a consistent aesthetic throughout the entire cup so these are all really the same kind of colors then I came in with like an ice pick and then just kind of swirled it around a little bit and then I'm going to rotate the cup ever so slightly and just let that beautiful spray paint just kind of coat everything once I have it swirled I'm going to kind of move the water around at the surface so that we don't have anything um, stick where it's not supposed to and then pulled it out. Now you can take a paper towel and just lightly dab down any of those like almost bubble spots that you see there. Um, what it is, it's just water got kind of trapped underneath it. So you can see here, I'm just taking a kind of shop towel and just pushing them down ever so slightly so that you don't have any like weird bubbles when it dries that creates unfortunate textures. Now you do wanna wear gloves, I did not. And you can see that I got some awesome hydro dipping on my hands, but just take your time, just kind of pushing down any of those big bubbles. Um, just use light pressure so you don't mess up the pattern and just let this dry fully before you move into the next steps. I probably let it dry for probably about four or five hours just because I was working on other things. And then it was time to move in with the acetone. Now this step is totally optional, but I really liked it because I wanted it to look more like a hydro dip peekaboo versus just like the traditional hydro dip that you see other places. So I just got several Q-tips and dipped them in acetone. And what I like to do is I'm using my baby blanket because I'll dip it and then I'll kind of spin it on the baby blanket a little bit just to get any excess off. Um, because you just want enough to remove the paint, but you don't want to saturate it because it can take off some of the parts that you don't want. 
So all I'm doing is I'm just taking the Q-tips and kind of following the natural curves and swirls from the Hydro Dip, and I'm just exposing that glitter underneath. Now, again, I've said this before, but there's no right or wrong to this. You can do a little, you could do a lot, um, but I really liked this detail because I wanted to reveal the swirl underneath and then also just kind of showcase some of that beautiful glitter um, that is um, showcasing that swirl again. So this is kind of a tedious process and it does get a little mundane, but just take your time. And one thing I will say is you can see there is actually don't be afraid to trim your Q-tips. So sometimes when you start, they kind of get a little bit spread out or they'll stick. Um, don't be afraid to kind of cut it off and then dip it in the acetone again so that you're not just going through hundreds and hundreds of Q-tips. You're using them as much as possible. And so we're not wasteful. So you can see here, I'm just kind of continuing the process following those natural kind of swirls that happen from the hydro dip um, and just kind of exposing those different um, glitter peekaboos that you see there once I was happy with my swirls, I rinsed this um, cup off with water and let that dry. And then I'm moving into a coat of epoxy. Now you can skip this step and go right into decal. I just have learned my lesson enough that I know that I mess up decals and I need the coat of epoxy to protect my designs. So I'm just coming in with a thin coat. I think I did about like 10, 15 milliliters just to cover. Um, and again, this is the one-to-one -one facet from Artistry just to make sure that that Beautiful paint is locked into place and then it was time for the decal. Once that coat of epoxy was dry, I did want to go in and sand the rim again just because I wanted to make sure that the final coats of epoxy really adhered well. And because of the hydro dip, the paint did go over the edge. So this is probably me being overly cautious. You could totally skip this step, but I'm just using my 120 grit sanding flap wheel and I'm just going around and exposing that top rim um, of the cup just to make sure that I have plenty of that little bit of stainless steel exposed so that my final coats of epoxy really adhere well. So I go around quickly, um, even though it doesn't look very quickly here, um, but I just go around with a flap wheel and then I will grab my, I just have an 80 grit sanding block on hand. You could really use whatever you want, but I just kind of come in and smooth out the edge that was created. It almost creates a little bit of a lip with the flap wheel. And this just makes sure that if you do take a sip, like it's not like a hard like line or uh, edge that you're touching to your lips. Now it was time for the decal and I get a lot of questions on how to use the uh, ultimate guide tool from Cami Page Boutique and this is going to be a vertical decal. So what I'm doing here is I'm using the vertical decal edge and you can see that I have a lot of transfer tape left over on the bottom of the decal. Now I do this on purpose just so that way I can have plenty to adhere to the edge but I took that straight edge lined it up with the bottom of the decal so that I knew it was perfectly straight and then I made sure to tack that extra transfer tape to the vertical edge tool and then I slid it on the up and down slide. So what I'm doing is I'm measuring the middle of the decal, marking it, and then I also marked the middle of my cup, put the cup onto the little um, ledge that you can say, lined it up so that it was perfectly centered on the cup, and then I just like push down the transfer tape. So there you can see that I've put my decal onto my cup and it is perfectly straight because I used the ultimate decal guide from Cami Page Boutique. I'll link it below in the description. But then because I did layer this decal, I wanted to make sure to seal the vinyl. So this is Quick Seal from Artistry Epoxy. I actually really like this. I was kind of apprehensive at first because I've been a quick coat fan for so long, but this actually is a blend of polyacrylic and polyurethane. So it's thicker and you get really, really great coverage so that your vinyl doesn't lift when you go into your final coats of epoxy. Speaking of our final coats of epoxy, I came in with about 20 milliliters um, for the first coat, let that dry completely in about two hours, and then I came back with a second final coat, and this baby was done. I absolutely love how this cup turned out, and I know this tutorial is different than other Hydro Dip cups out there, but I wanted to put a unique spin on it and make it truly my own. I hope this tutorial inspires you and I can't wait to see what you create. If you have any questions about any of the steps or information, please feel free to reach out and I'll be more than happy to help. As always, thank you for watching. It really means a lot to me. If you like this tutorial, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see future videos. You can also ring the bell so you're notified of all future cup making goodies. Thank you again. I love you guys. Bye.